Hello and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. If you're new to my channel, please click the subscribe button, hang around longer and check out all the other watch reviews on the channel. For today's video, we have a very special watch, the Hamilton Ventura XXL model made famous by the king himself, Elvis Presley, when he wore it in his movie Blue Hawaii. So you can see from the poster here, the one featured has a uh, PVD finish but the watch that I'm featuring today has a stainless steel polish finish. Now this watch here has a really unusual and unconventional size and shape so all the measurements that I'm going to give you should be used only as a rough guide. The watch has a diameter of 46mm left to right plus this huge crown is 50mm. The thickness of the case is 11.5mm. The lug length it's about 49.5 millimeters. Now I'm not going to give you the strap width because you see this unusual kind of lug construction. So I think there's no point in giving you the strap width because you can't fit any aftermarket straps. The Ventura XXL is powered by the ETA2824 movement. It is automatic, hand winds, hackable, and in this case it's visible by the transparent case back. Now both front and back glass uh, sapphire crystal and the entire watch is stainless steel made to a polished finish. The retail price of this watch is Singapore dollars 1820 that converts to about US dollars just under $1,400. It is worth noting that this watch here on review is an older version which houses the 2024 movement. All current models are housed with Hamilton's newer H10 movement which has a longer power reserve. Let's talk about the design of this watch. One look at it, you know it's an oddball design. It's not round, it's not square, it's not rectangular. It's just on its own. Very unusual, unconventional. Hamilton used to call this the offset series but these days they've just listed this under the uh, Ventura series in their website. Now for me it looks more like a shield or a badge and apart from that it's got this step looking design at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock areas of the case and the crown here looks like the thruster of an aeroplane it's just crazy looking so interesting to note that the watch has a bit of curve to it it's not entirely flat it's got a bit of curve presumably to hug the wearer's wrist and as we look at the dial, of course, the dial is trying to look like the speaker grill, uh, very fitting for a design that is called Elvis, Elvis Ventura. So I believe this is to mimic the uh, speakers on stage. And get a bit of a skeleton design to it. You can see the movement through the uh, speaker grill. So there's also an unusual case back crystal, which allows you to see the movement uh, nothing much to look at apart from the uh, Hamilton sign rotor and not too sure if you can see clearly you've got the Ventura words uh, engraved all around the movement holder so let's talk a bit more on the dial it's got an unusual design first of course due to the uh, speaker grill design but the markers are also sitting at very weird positions now for a start this really big marker here is not the 12 it is the one o'clock and the small little marker here that doesn't really stand out is indeed the 12. So this is the six and the huge marker here is the five. Uh, luckily the huge marker at the left is uh, the nine o'clock. So uh, that is actually easier to understand. So the three o'clock, nine o'clock markers are easy, but 12 and six, I'm not sure. Maybe a bit confusing for a new buyers of this watch and then you get the brand Hamilton brand badge and the model Ventura if I'm not wrong these things are applied let me try to get it closer to the camera I believe they're applied but I can't be very sure maybe they're just printed right the hands are really small and they've got some red accents going on at the tip of the second hands as well as uh, the markers from 12 to 15 so 12 o'clock 5 10 and 15 uh, they are lined in red whereas the rest they are lined in normal black and white now the unique design elements don't end at the watch case itself even the strap here is a special design and 
I would think it's very impressive. It's a thick, well-made rubber strap here. It attaches to the watch case at a really weird angle. It's not straight, it's not curved. It's fitted this way, it's like curved, angled. So there's no chance or no way you can buy an aftermarket strap. As we look closer on the inside of the strap, you will see Hamilton Ventura inscribed many times repeatedly, just like the uh, movement holder. Got the words Hamilton Ventura repeatedly inscribed on it. Same goes for the uh, six o'clock side of the strap. The strap is really well made, it's thick, solid. There are no more lines to be found. The strap here also has a signed buckle. Very well made here with the Hamilton logo. And there are two keepers. The fixed one has the H logo. And the running keeper has some model name inscribed at the back of it. So overall, a very unique design. Lots of features going on. Special design, unconventional. You've got the shoe shape, a step design here. Off-centered markers. The one o'clock is big, but the 12 o'clock doesn't stand out. And of course, this strange looking crown here, which is actually quite comfortable to wind or for adjusting the time. Now, even the strap, you know, it's very unique. It is mounted at a weird angle and it's integrated into the, onto the back of the watch. So I guess it's fair to say that if you like this watch, if you've bought this watch, it's mainly because you like the design, you find it unique, it's quirky, it's flamboyant, Maybe you're just a big fan of uh, Elvis. So I'd say if you're buying this watch, it's purely for the design. And as for the build, for this price, Singapore dollars, 1,820. I would say the build is reasonable. Uh, you're getting good materials. You're getting enough attention to the movement, sign rotor, exhibition case back, sapphire crystals front and back. Uh, the thing is, the finishing could be improved. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now to my surprise, the watch actually has loom on its hands and the one o'clock, five o'clock and nine o'clock markers. Let's switch off the light and see how bright the loom is. All right, here you can see that the hands and the oversized markers are loom, but there's really nothing to shout about for, for this watch. In this case, the loom is just pretty weak. And I think the loom is starting to dim even after less than a minute or so. So I don't even know why they bothered to put loom on the hands and markers in this case. Here's a size comparison between the Hamilton Ventura and the good old Omega Speedmaster. One look and you can tell that the Hamilton is much bigger with this odd looking triangular shape as well as the thruster part that is jutting out from the center of the watch. In terms of thickness though, the Omega is much thicker than the Hamilton but I'll say overall the Hamilton is a much bigger watch. Here's a wrist shot of the watch on my 6.8 inch or 17 centimeters wrist. As you can see, the watch is slightly on the big side, but still very wearable because it has no lux at all. But the strap is uh, integrated into the case at some weird angle, so uh, there are no luck to speak of. The strap is pretty comfortable. I wear it on the third hole with minimal tail end uh, protruding from the other side. Now overall the watch sits very close to your wrist, very low profile. Again due to the lug construction, the strap and lug integration sort of makes the watch hug your wrist very closely and that has caused me a bit of problems, especially on the side that is nearer to the back of my hand. Uh, if we look at the center of the strap here, now this part here protrudes really far out from the center of the strap, thereby making it uncomfortable each time I flex my wrist. So as you can see here, whenever I flex my wrist, this thing actually rubs against the back of my hand. All right, so this uh, thruster design looks good when you look at it face on, but if you were to wear it, it cause a bit of problem. Uh, first, it sits really tight, really close to your body, and the next thing is, it tends to dig into the back of your hand. Every time I've worn this watch, a lot of people will come up to me and ask me, hey, what are you wearing? It looks kind of strange, it looks nice, it looks cool. But at the end of the day, these reasons are non-watch related. To begin with, this watch doesn't tell the time very well. 
can see from the dial, it's pretty messy. It's got the speaker grill thing going on, off-centered markers, odd shape. So at first glance, or even at the second try, sometimes I can't tell the time very well. The hands are really small as well, so they're not helping things. Another thing about this watch that annoys me is how easy it collects scratches. I'm not sure if it's the quality of finish or if it's the design that makes the watch so prone to scratches. Uh, I rarely wear this watch. I, I wear it about two or three times a year, but then you can see it's badly scratched up. Mostly micro lines, fine lines. Uh, I haven't banged it up badly, but then it's just a scratch magnet. I'm not too fond of the polish uh, on this one. And finally, I must say that this watch is rather uncomfortable to wear due to the large and protruding crown area. If you take a look at the center of the watch, all right, I center it and you can see this part protrudes way too much. And each time I wear it, this part is definitely going to scratch the back of my hand, making it so uncomfortable. If I were to loosen the strap, then the whole thing is going to flop around. But if I tighten it, and if it sits tight on my wrist, this thing will scratch the back of my hand. So to sum up, I would say this watch has a place in your collection if you are the type of buyer who prefers something unique, something that creates an impact, something that's a conversation starter. If you are the sort who likes watches that are very common, two or three hands, you know, with a rotate bezel, that kind of thing, then probably this watch is not for you. This watch has got too many unique design elements going on, from the weird shape to the odd looking crown design, and also from its integrated rubber strap kind of thing so if you like the watch for the impact that it makes or if you're a fan of Elvis Presley then perhaps it's worth looking at the watch if you like this video please subscribe to my channel until then I'll see you again this is the watch Kaki from Singapore bye bye